Hello Knitting Addicts, welcome to my living room and to this 15th episode of my creative podcast. I'm Selma and you can find me on social networks and Ravelry um, as Selma TLBC. <clears throat> Sorry, I hope you're well. Um, as you can probably see and hear and everything, I'm not at the top of my game today. <clears throat> Sorry, I got a call. So... Um, yeah, I got a cold, I'm tired, so I have a sore, and I might cough at some point. I will try drinking tea all along the, the podcast in order to limit the coughing, but if it happens, please excuse me, because it's completely <laughs> out of my control sometimes. So, um, today we will talk about sewing, knitting, and some crocheting. Crocheting? Crocheting? I don't know. If you do, please let me know. Um, that's part of the subtleties of the English pronunciation, which I absolutely don't master. Um, <clears throat> I'm going to try new things today um, in the editing. So if you like them or if you, or if you don't, please let me know. That way I can adapt and yeah, twitch things as I go. It's still a work in progress, this podcast. So, today I have quite a few finished objects to show you. The first one is sewing and it's shorts. It's the Brooklyn Shorts by Moon and Soul. I bought the kit at the Création et Savoir Faire um, fair. <clears throat> In the kit you had the fabric, the thread, the buttons and the, well, the zip. And interfacing and lining yes that's it so brooklyn is a sailor mid-height short it is perfect for classy and comfortable style to wear with tights in winter or with your beautiful legs in summer well let me tell you that for now it is definitely with tights because here it's not exactly freezing but it's quite cold and rainy so thank you paris for that so the shorts <clears throat> I love them. Let me tell you this. I love them. Sorry about the change in lightning is the problem with dark, darker fabrics. The fabric, I have no idea what it actually is, but it's very, very nice. I love this texture, the texture and the contrast between the shiny parts and the matte ones. It has an invisible zipper on the side, which was obviously a new thing for me. And yeah, I'm sorry because I really don't, um, I'm, I'm quite sure I have no idea how these are actually called. I can tell you the French word, but it's not going to help, I'm afraid. Um, so, yeah, it took me like seven hours, I think, excluding the cutting of the, of the fabric, obviously, but... Yeah, I started, I wanted to finish this one by the end of January and I finished it on the 1st of February around half past two in the morning. So let's consider that I actually made it. Uh, yeah, there was a lot of um, seam ripping and uh, re-sawing and yeah, but uh, I learn as I go and I like a challenge. So it was my first invisible zipper and my first no, it was not my first of these, but this was definitely a new thing for me. <clears throat> and I have to say, I'm really happy that they have a YouTube channel where they actually explain everything. Well, basically everything. They have a video about sewing the shorts and they have videos, more specific videos for some parts of the construction, which was super, super helpful. I don't think, well, the, the written explanations are quite clear, to be honest, but some things were just too um, abstract for me, you know, like you need to saw a straight line, then cut in the corner, then turn something 180 degrees, but honestly, I had no idea what exactly I was supposed to turn and what it was supposed to look like in the end, so the video was excellent, yes. Um, I will put a short video about showing you how it fits. It makes some some wrinkles in the front, but 
to be fair, I don't really care. Um, <clears throat> I think it fits quite well. It doesn't pinch me in weird places and it's just, yeah, it's not perfect. And I don't think I will be making new shorts anytime soon or even pants for that matter because it's, uh, it's a bit out too out of my comfort zone but it was a good experience and uh, yeah I'm glad I made it <clears throat> so um, that was the first sewing project the second one is super small and was super fast I whipped it yesterday night I went back to uh, fabric tissues for a lot of reasons including the fact that these don't end in trash um, I'm not zero waste by by well any standard, but I'm trying to I'm trying to uh, let's say uh, yeah well I'm trying to reduce what we actually throw so um, fabric tissues was were were good so, so I made this small pouch pocket with um, waxed fabric inside. Because, well, I always have fabric tissues on me, but I don't always have pockets, so I'd like to keep them at hand in my handbag without actually having them in the handbag, you know? Well, gathering dust or leaving germs everywhere, that's a bit disgusting. So this will be easier to just put the, f the tissue in, be it folded fresh or used and... Uh, and yeah, just put it in the bag afterwards, that way it doesn't run around. My tissues, basically, I use them one day and then they go in the laundry, so <clears throat> there is no problem with hygiene, generally speaking. And this will be easier to clean and to, um, and to dry as well with the waxed fabric, I think. So yeah, that was just a small thing. Also, it's good practice, so it's a win-win thing. <coughs> I'm sorry. Um, concerning my work in, works in progress, because that's everything. Oh, no, 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 no. I'm sorry. I didn't talk to you about any knitting projects. I finished two, actually. First one is the Flesensee hat by Verena Kors. Um, I'm going to show it to you even though it's it's going to ruin my hair. I know it will because it already did after I did the French version of the podcast. So yeah, here it is. Super nice, super snug, you know, keeps my ear wa ears warm. Uh, it was provisional cast on and I folded it and knitted them together so that the, <clears throat> the border is fixed. And, um, but there are also instructions in the pattern, I told you so, but well, in case you just want to make a regular border, which you will fold and, <clears throat> and just fold every time you put it on. Um, it's the same designer as the Lan hat, the, the cream one, which I showed you lately. So you have the same kind of slanted stitches there. Um, they take a bit of getting used to, but the result is really nice. Those ribs look gorgeous. Beautiful. Uh, yeah, you always work with pairs of stitches, actually. So um, I think to go to the right, you stitch two together, then you stitch the first one again. Well, then you, no, no, you knit two together, then you knit the first one again. So you have two. And then you have two in the end. And for the left ones, I think you knit the second one through the back loop and then you knit two together through the back loop again. And that's how it looks like. Yeah, the, the pattern is super clear, super easy to follow. The explanations are really great. So it was a very pleasant knit. It took me less than a week. But these are, well, these slow me down, definitely. <laughs> So that's why I wasn't as fast as for this second hat, which I made yesterday. No, not yesterday. Day before, the day before yesterday? Yes, the day before yesterday. It's called the Short Rose Sideways Hat by Christy Porter, I think. It's a free pattern. I found it on Ravelry. Super, super easy. <clears throat> I will show you. 
This one is not for me. It's going to be for um, um, our knitting for the homeless operation. So I will just wash it after I show you. <clears throat> I haven't yet. Yeah, it's snug and warm and it covers everything, even if you have a slightly bigger head than mine. Oh gosh. <sighs> Things you do for podcasting. Um, yeah, so basically it's knit in short rows. You start with, that's why it's knit this way. Well, on the side and not top, no, bottom up or however you want to call it. So you knit 35 stitches, then you knit 34 and you turn, then 32, then 30, then 28, etc, etc, to down to 22 and then you start again with 35. And you make eight rays, let's say. I chose to make a um, three needle bind off because I suck at grafting. Sorry, I suck at grafting. I can't do a proper seam for the life of me. So I decided to go for something visible but good looking. <clears throat> Yeah, you can just wear it in the back anyway, so it doesn't matter, and the inside looks nice as well. It would probably be reversible anyway. And I think it's going to be easy to adapt to smaller sizes for kids' versions. I knit it in um, Encore Chunky from Plymouth Yarn uh, with size 6 needles. It's 75% acrylics, 25% wool. It's definitely not something which I would um, go for naturally, but I think I got it in a swap or something. So yeah, whatever. It's going to hold well thanks to the acrylic um, volume, let's say. And honestly, that's what matters most for that kind of project. I will probably make a new one, well, another one, but a smaller one with what I have left because I definitely don't have enough for a full adult size <coughs> hat but I have enough for a small one so yeah now we can go on to the <laughs> to the works in progress I'm still on my Jenny vague yeah the yarn ball was trying to escape <laughs> um well it's going well I have no idea how many rep repetitions of the pattern I have done yet, but I spent two hours in the waiting room of the doctor two days, well, yesterday, and um, yeah, I did some progress then. And I got quite a few compliments in the meet as well, so it was nice. Not the waiting part, but <laughs> the rest was okay. Um, on to my fourth bow bowl of yarn and I have nine in a hole so I'm not exactly a hundred percent confident that I can actually finish it by the end of the month but I will do my best I need to focus on that one and stop being distracted with smaller stuff or other stuff for that matter I also went back to my pavement sweater by Vera Vanimeki but I well it's somewhere on the sofa and to be honest there is not that much to be seen I just made 20, well, I just need 10 more centimeters of, of, um, of, um, stock knit stitch, so nothing, not much to see, to be honest. I will show you next time when I have made, well, hopefully more progress. I am hoping to finish it before Edinburgh Yarn Festival. Wish me luck. Yeah, I think I will have to make a choice as, at some point between which one I actually want to finish before the festival. Because I don't, I think I will have trouble with the Donny Vague to actually finish it by the end of February, which is a shorter month. I should remember that. Um, but the sweater might work. I don't know. We will see that. Uh, I have one other work in progress, which is crochet, which never happens. It's a hat and it's super basic. I uh, took the pattern from a beginner's crochet book, which I got this week. 
easy crochet. In case you speak French, to be honest, I think this is one of the best ones. It's super, super clear, super easy to follow, and um, the 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 photos are great. It's very progressive, so you even if you are a complete beginner, you can definitely find your way through the book. You know, I'm knit. Um, I'm I'm crocheting this with the, the Rico Design Fashion Highland Tweed Chunky. Got that in a box, subscription box, a couple of years ago, maybe more. It's acrylic virgin wool and viscose. It's a number, it's a size six crochet. Yeah, it's really basic. It's just black with some speckles of color. There's mustard, purple, blue, yeah. It's nice. This is going to be a children's size though, because the pattern calls for a size 10 crochet, but I didn't have any yarn big enough for that. So I went for a size six and a smaller size. I will show you the result next time. That's all for the works in progress. Um, I received this week two patterns, which I ordered from Colette Patterns. That's the Aster, blouse, shirt, and the moneta dress. I ordered the fabric for these two as well and I will pick it up somewhere this week when I have time because it's arrived already. I'm going for a nice dark chambray for the for the blouse and for and uh, Milan on it for the dress. I've taken a look at the, the explanations already and they seem to be very clear and uh, I think I'm going to have a lot of fun. This one is going to be my February project. Yes. Um, well, I think that's it for this week. There are just two more things which are going to happen in case you're in Paris Well, in the next three weeks. And there's the Aiguillon Fête Fair next week in the Porte de Versailles. <clears throat> Sorry, uh, I will be there on Thursday, but and also probably on Saturday. So if you want to hang out, if you're going there and uh, yeah, you want to grab a coffee or something, just let me know in the comments and I'm sure we will find a way to actually do that. I would love to meet with some of you if you're in the area. It's uh, it's going to be huge because it has 140 vendors, I think. It's mostly a mess, <laughs> but I hope that they made the same kind of effort as they did for the the fair which happened in November, where the the hall was bigger and you had more space to walk around. So yeah, I'm keeping my fingers crossed for that. Last time I checked, there was no map available yet. And it's a bit complicated to actually look for vendors in their vendors list because it's so big and so unorganized. <laughs> I haven't checked recently but there will probably be a map and for now so for now i um i haven't decided on anything in particular so let me know if you have plans and you want to share them okay the next thing is on the 27th of february it's uh, knitting for the homeless and yoga it's um basically pay what you want yoga it will be well the the class will be given by Gael, Knit Spirit. She's amazing. She's a super great teacher and uh, I think it's going to be a really, um, a really good, it's a good occasion to um, actually make makes business and pleasure, let's say. Not business, but do something good for the community and have a good time with yoga. So yeah, it's on the 27th of February. I will put a link in the show notes um, to the Facebook page of the event, because I think there is one. I'm pretty sure there is one. Um, I will be there. I don't know if I will do the yoga, it will depend on my health, but I sure hope that I will be better in, tw in three weeks. 
in more than three weeks. So um, yeah, hopefully see you there. I am done for today. I hope you enjoyed this episode. Um, please, if you did, like, subscribe, share. It's it's not just to please me, to be honest. It's also to actually make it more visible for other people, if you well, so that more people can join us in this lovely community of subscribers, knitters, sewists, crocheters of everything, basically. Um, I wish you a very good day, a very good evening, very good week. And um, I will see you next time very soon. In the meantime, enjoy your knitting. Bye.